everyone, Adam here, so is our podcast. Today I have a movie review for you. I had a chance to see Demigod, the newest movie by writer-director Miles Doliak, who also stars in the movie, which is crazy ambitious given everything that's going on. Uh, it's a uh, it's one of those movies where the old ancient world clashes with our modern one, and there's just something about those stories that really grip me. I think it's the same kind of reason why people are into ghost stories, where it just feels like there's something out there. It feels like there's something bigger. Um, I don't, you know, necessarily believe in that for real, but as far as the story concept goes, I think it's cool. So this is a, a woman and her husband return to her birthplace, which is in Germany's Black Forest. Uh, they actually used Mississippi as a stand-in, but it is gorgeous scenery, and they make sure that they use it right. So when you check out Demigod, sorry, the cat, when you check out Demigod, Make sure you watch it on the biggest screen possible. Uh, the screeners always come to my laptop. Um, it was a Vimeo link, so I w started watching it on my laptop. I got through the kind of, um, <laughs> not a cold opening, it's not a TV show, but I got through the, the initial opening scene, which kind of sets up the movie, but is also not the core of the movie. And I had to stop it on the laptop, get it on my big screen, and watch it properly as cr close to a theatrical experience as I could get in my home. And it really made a difference for later on when the characters are in the forest and all the scenery is being utilized. I actually got to do an interview with Miles and talk about this movie, and he mentioned, completely unprompted by me, some scenes that they actually added or locations that they changed to do things just to really show off the beauty of where they shot this thing, and it's all there. Uh, the movie stars Rachel Nichols, Jeremy London... Alina Sanchez, and, uh, sorry, Johans Miles. Uh, there's a few other people in it, of course. As I said, uh, Miles is in it, and there's a kind of trio of, I'm going to say witches, for the lack of a better term, even though that's not 100% accurate, but kind of um, forest guardians, I guess it would be. Uh, Johans Miles looks very familiar to me. I, I know I've seen him in something else. I can't place it, but he did a phenomenal job. And uh, Rachel Nichols, of course, Man in the High Castle uh, on Amazon, and she is absolutely amazing. So if you'd already seen my interview I did with Miles, the very end of it, I ask him about the intro. It's a scene all in German with these kind of supernatural, larger-than-life characters, and you do get a gist of what's going on, even if you can't understand it. Because you've seen rituals in movies before, you could kind of put the pieces together. You know a bit what the movie is about from what I just told you reading the synopsis. No spoilers. Uh, the version I had did not have subtitles. It's supposed to have subtitles. When you watch this on VOD or if you're lucky enough to be near a theater that is showing it, you will have subtitles. Uh, I was a little bit back and forth because at first I thought it was a weird choice. Um, I always have this thing in movies where if you're following an English-speaking character and they're surrounded by German people, just, you know, given this movie as an example, and there's no subtitles, I get that, because you're following the English speaker's journey, so you wouldn't understand either. Uh, if, if you get what I'm saying, it could be, you know, substitute any language for any language. It could be the total opposite if this was made for a German audience or if you're following the German protagonist, but whatever, you understand what I'm saying. And later on in the movie, that is the case, and... Miles didn't flat out say, but I believe in those cases, the subtitles were intentionally left off, but in the beginning, when they're kind of doing the setup, there's supposed to be there. So it starts with a ritual, and it's very bizarre, very well shot. A really great uh, mood lighting and cool uh, less is more special effects. This was a, you know, micro budget indie movie. It was not put out by, well, it's not uh, made by a major studio, and it was also made in COVID, but at no point in any of watching this did I feel like the budget was what it was or that it didn't have a production company behind. I mean, Miles has been making movies for a long time now. This is the sixth that he's directed. He was an actor before that. He's done tons of stage. So he has the, you know, 10,000 hours, if you want to go with that saying. He has the experience. He's done the work. And it really shows on the screen because, like I was saying, this never feels like it's missing anything that a larger budget or a larger studio would have had. Even the um, 
even the gore effects, everything is there, everything looks good. And it's not one of those like torture porn Eli Roth kind of movies where horrible things happen just for the sake of horrible things happening. But it is a horror movie. There's horrific things happening to people and where there is uh, blood and maiming and that sort of thing. I don't want to give specifics. It is very convincing. It looks it's very well done. It's it's very cool. Uh, so tons of credit to Miles, tons of credit to the cast and crew for just making it happen. Uh, again, referring to the interview I did with Miles, you should really check it out. It was an awesome conversation. He talks about in his second movie, they did a really challenging scene where everyone had to kind of come together to make it happen. And I love that spirit about indie movies. And you feel that in this, even with it being shot under really constricting circumstances on a tight budget in a tight amount of time, all the pieces are there at all lines. While I did like Demigod, there were some things that I kind of not rubbed me the wrong way. But at one point, it just kind of becomes humans being hunted in the woods. And that's part of the story. I'm not knocking it, but it is a trope we've seen many times. And I just felt like with all the cool lore and things that were set up, it could have gone a, a tad bit deeper or adjacent to what we've seen to just kind of forge a little bit of new territory. And, and it didn't feel like I was watching something I had already seen before. I'm just talking about the the trope of the horror movie. But to be fair, at the same time, that is something that horror movies kind of do. The horror audience is doesn't watch those movies as much as you watch uh, a different kind of movie where the formula is necessarily the, the worst thing. Uh, just for me, there was a couple specific instances where if you went left instead of right or something along those lines, it could have taken it to another level. Sorry, I feel like I'm talking like Jeff Goldblum right now. I'm just trying to express this the best I can because I'm not trying to knock the movie. I mean it more as um, an outsider's perspective perspective as constructive criticism because Demigod is hitting theaters and VOD uh, day and date, October 15th, Friday, uh, two weeks before Halloween. Great timing for a movie like this. This is a horror movie. It is not a slasher movie. It is not torture porn. It's a well thought out, well paced, very well acted horror movie that draws on ancient lore from the old forgotten world and uh, family ties, memories and what this woman's story is all about. I think it's a cool blending of worlds. You should definitely check it out. Uh, Gravitas Ventures is putting it out and we've been doing a lot of coverage from them in the last couple of years now if you've noticed, and they are growing by leaps and bounds, so keep an eye on that name as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps us grow our audience. Make sure you listen to So Is Your Podcast every single week, wherever you podcast. So Is Your Podcast can also be found on Patreon, where for as little as $1 a month, you get multiple monthly bonus shows. SoWizardPodcast.com is your resource for reviews, recommendations, merchandise, videos, and more. We love hearing feedback, so drop us a note in the comments. Leave us something on social media. All the accounts can be found after the show and in the show notes. And on a more personal note, a good friend and I have an ongoing comedy comic series out. It's called Social Studies, slice of life comedy comic about the high school experience. Uh, we write it like a sitcom and we do the styling and the energy like the 90s cartoons that we grew up on inspired us. You can find all of that and more at socialstudiescomic.com. Chapter one is wrapped up now. Uh, there's an Indiegogo going on and chapter two is starting very soon. We are hard at work on that. So more to come. Check it out. Really appreciate it. Thanks.